Good morning. Today we're talking about GitHub workflows, workflow dispatchers. Mouthful. This is a continuation from last week's repository dispatchers that you can find a video link up there somewhere. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to trigger GitHub workflows through the GitHub UI. So let's get to it. Intro. Right, so same thing that I always do. I created a GitHub repository where I keep the example. So feel free to just grab it, clone it, do whatever you want with it. Workflow dispatchers is just another event on how to trigger GitHub workflows. But in this case scenario, it allows you to do it through the GitHub UI. As you can see, you, can, you have a run workflow and you can actually provide parameters. In this case, let's just say test and you're able to run it on whatever branch you want. And there you go, and just runs your workflow manually. There is a couple of uh, pro pros for actually running GitHub workflows this way. Like for example, there is certain things that you want to rerun on certain branches, or there is deployments that you want to do per environment and you want to do it manually instead of actually doing continuous deployment. The options are all out there, so just give it a try. Getting into the code, the main event that you'll see is that there is a workflow dispatch event. And what this will do is that whenever you actually trigger that workflow, the way that I just showed you, it will grab the inputs from here. And that's what it's actually displaying for you to choose from. And you can actually access the parameters by just hitting them through the GitHub that event that inputs variable. As you can see here, we get the environment and then we get the mode and those map to the actual variables that we have up here. And you can have the same thing that we do when we're setting up an actual action where you have required fields then you have um, required fields and then you have default fields, but you could also not put anything if they're not really required. You could also do a require false if you really wanted to. And that's pretty much it. It's actually a pretty straightforward and we can do a couple of tests. So the one that we just ran, for example, it's one that we actually sent a development and the environment and mode we sent test. So this actually outputs the dev EMV with mode test. And if we go back and change the actual inputs of the environment variable and we say production because that's one of the inputs that we expect. And let's change this to something else like I like coffee then we run that, we refresh, then you'll see that it will actually grab the variables that we just provided and output it depending on the commands that are in the workflow. In the workflow itself, I have it so that if it's production, it'll just echo running in EMV production with mode, blah, blah, blah. In this case, it's just going to be I love coffee. So you can see that it didn't run the dev environment because I had an if statement on the, on the step but it did run the prod environment because it matched and it echoed the output that I was expecting, which is running prod EMV with mode, I like coffee. That's actually pretty much it. It's just a very simple tutorial to actually show you how to utilize workflow dispatchers. So make sure to subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Bye.